Hey there, so you made it this far, congratulations. Now it's time to just have some fun with what we learned. Now the basic idea is that standard form is very useful for performing operations that otherwise would be very tedious to do. So imagine, for example, that I want to multiply these two numbers. So I have 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and I want to multiply that times 0, point zero 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 two five now I look at this and I'm like oh god where do I even start well I start by putting this in standard form so all I need to do is count the zeros here one two three four five six seven eight okay so this is just four times ten to the eight and then I do the same in the other side so I'm just like one, two, three, four, five. So this is times 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5. And now here's the beauty of this. I can just multiply these two things together. So 4 times 2.5, that's just 10. And then these two just add up. So it's a minus 5, that's just 3. So 10 times 10 to the 3, and that's just 10 to the 4. And that's it, I'm done. So as you can see, turning things into standard form greatly simplifies this thing, because otherwise there is just no way you could keep all those zeros in your head. But this operation, you can just do it in your head, you don't need a calculator. And you can multiply very big and very small numbers with hardly any effort. You will spend quite a bit of time doing this when you do the exercises. Now there is another reason why standard form is so useful, and it is because we use it to estimate quantities very fast. And this is called order of magnitude. Now the idea of an order of magnitude estimate is to get a rough idea for how big a quantity is. So for example, if I want to know the distance between the Earth and the Sun, maybe I'm not interested in knowing whether it's, you know, 670 kilometers, but I want to know, well, is it what, closer to a kilometer, or a thousand kilometers, or a million kilometers, or what? This is something that will give us a very rough idea of how big a quantity is. Now, let me show you how this works. The, the, first, the first thing that we need to master is this idea of order of magnitude. And the, the order of magnitude of a quantity is just the closest power of 10. So let me give me an example. So this is me, and my height is 172, which is the same as saying 172 times 10 to the 0 right? So in order of magnitude, the closest power of 10, this is just 10 to the 0. My height is just 10 to the 0, or just 1 meter. And you're like, well, no, but 1 meter is very far from 2 meters. It is, but it is much closer to, to 2 meters than 2 meters is to 10 meters. So in order of magnitude, my height is 1 meter, meaning it's much closer to 1 meter than it is to 10 meters or to 0 0.1 meters, for example. I could do similar things with a bunch of things. So for example, a building is in order of magnitude, either 10 to the 1 or 10 to the 2, depending on how tall it is, right? So the Eiffel Tower would be 10 to the 2, because it's roughly 100 meters. Yes, of course, it's 300 meters, but 300 is closer to 100 than it is to 1,000. Now, of course, just doing this for one number doesn't make a lot of sense, but what does make sense is then using these things to combine things together. Now, let me give you an example of how Fermi, who was a very famous physicist, used this kind of reasoning to calculate all kinds of crazy things. I'm going to give you an order of magnitude estimate of the number of leaves in a tree. Okay, so let me show you how I, I would go about doing this. Um, first thing, I draw a tree. Okay, so here's a tree. And then I ask myself, well, roughly what is the volume of a tree? A tree? Well, I'd say the radius would be around, let's say, 5 meters, depending on the tree. Let's say, let's say 2 meters, it's, it's a small tree. Okay, so around 2 meters radius, which is the same as saying, in order of magnitude, 10 to the 0 meters. And then I ask myself, well, so what is the volume of this thing? Well, this is roughly a square, roughly, right? So I can roughly, a square, well, a cube, right? I can roughly put a cube here. So I'm like, okay, so what is the volume of this cube in order of magnitude? Well, it's this times 
So this this thing times itself three times, right? Base times height times width. Okay. So then the volume is roughly ten to the zero times itself three times is just one meter cubed, roughly. And again, that's a relatively small tree. If you have a big big tree, then probably the volume is much higher than that. Um, okay. And then I'm like, well, how about how about the the leaves? Well, then what I would do is let's assume that leaves are relatively well packed and then think about how big a leaf is. And a, a leaf is approximately 10 centimeters, right? So it's like something like this. It's like 10, it's like a, it's like a little square, which is roughly 10 centimeters in size. And then the spacing between leaves is actually pretty big vertically, right? We could say, just looking at the one that's right next to me, let's just, let's just give them another 10 centimeters in separation. Okay, so let's just say they're separated by 10 centimeters more. So again, I can assume that one leaf on average takes around this volume in a tree, which is Again, so let's let's just calculate this. So the volume of a leaf is roughly centimeters is just 0 0.1 meters, right? So it's 10 to the minus one three times. So it's 10 to the minus three cubic meters. Okay. Now using this very rough estimate, I can just say, well, how many leaves then are there in a tree? Well, all I need to do is I need to take my previous volume, I need to divide by the volume of a leaf, so it's just going to be 1 over 10 to the 3, sorry, minus 3, and then that's just equal roughly to 10 to the 3 leaves. So a small tree, sort of like a bush, has around a thousand leaves. Now a big tree, like the one right outside my lab, has a lot more, because here, this is closer to 10 than it is to 1. So this would basically blow this by a thousand, which would give us here around a million leaves, which is, which is a lot of leaves. But the basic idea here is that, of course, a tree is not going to have a thousand leaves. Some of them will have 500, some of them will have 3,000, but they're not going to have two million if they have a rough volume of one cubic meter. Okay, now you try, there's a bunch of problems for you to try. Lots of them are very challenging. That's why it's fun. Give them a go. If you get stuck, ask me for a clue. I'm not going to give you the answer, but I will give you a clue. Have fun.